Finding my musical influence was, <laughs> I had I had records from my dad, from my grandparents, from everybody, and like I, I might have a George Jones album, or I might have a Third Time Out album. Skinner, Skinner all day long. That, that was a huge influence of mine. He was four or five years old, and I had a big jacked up K5 blazer, and he'd, he'd say, Daddy, play White Yachting. He couldn't say lightning, he'd say White, White Yachting by George Jones. And, He'd just kick his feet. He'd drive that old truck of mine and just kick his little leg. You know, I'd turn that George Jones on and he'd say, Whoo, yeah, what, yachting? <laughs> I first uh, saw him take an interest in music. He'd stake my guitar out while I was at work, out in my bed, my Martin guitar. So. The album I learned how to play guitar really to was called Third Time Out Live at the Mac. And I just sat there in, in my papa's room with his guitar and I just played that stuff and played it and played it. We were on vacation in Destin, Florida. I always go to pawn shops, stuff like that, just goofing off and was in there and he's like, Dad, that's what I want for my birthday, I want a guitar. He found this electric guitar and amp. That's one of the gifts I've got him he, he never put down ever. And he was already playing it on the way home, you know, picking up some tunes on the radio. I couldn't believe he was just that quick to learn it. This whole family's been into music for years. He took right to it. He had the gift, and the rest is going to be history. A lot of people ask, they're like, man, you got a lot of Southern rock in, in, your, in your songs and whatnot, but you're like a country singer. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to say this. It's country done my way. When I get off the road, man, I just, I gotta get outside, do something outside, man. It, it really don't matter, golfing, fishing, hunting, something. Get a little, get a little bit of God's green earth in my soul here, man. It just, just something like that. It just tends to put me in a good place. You get out here and uh, have a couple beers with your buddies and just, being from Georgia, I mean, there ain't nothing else to do other than play golf, fish, or hunt, or have a bonfire, or do whatever. I used to be a little old hole in the wall bar up here in town. His mama drug him up there and put him out there in front of a bunch of us rednecks and he took off with it from there and he wasn't no more than 14, 15 year old. My wife and I went to see him at a little club up in Blue Ridge, Georgia and it was just him playing acoustic and he had a guitar player with him. It was immediate. I mean, the voice that he had just drew you in. It was something that really made a statement. When you see him, when you hear him, there's no, like, go see this guy. I think touring is what makes it. I'm more on, I guess, the southern rock, country, <laughs> not necessarily outlaw, but the guys that are doing it a little bit different. I'm more on that aspect, but like, if you look at people like Taylor Swift, I give her a hell of a lot of, of credit for doing it the way she did it, where she'd walk out to her merch table and sit there and sign till the people went home. My entire career has been based on that. I always respected that. And being very personable with your fans, it, which takes a lot of work, he's always there for them. Every single show, if I was headlining, I always come out to the merch table after the show and I'll sign till they're done. Take pictures, don't matter, I'll talk to them. People enjoy connecting with the artists that they support. I like that simplicity that, that I've structured my career. I would say an alkylate of mine, somebody that was a huge influence to me very early on, Brantley Gilbert, also from Georgia. He was nice enough to invite us up to Connecticut to play at the Mohegan Sun Arena with him. That was one of those times where I went, you know what, this is exactly why I do this. There's a whole different ball game from playing a bar or playing an amphitheater. When you walk into an arena and you walk on stage and the fact that there's so many people that you can't even hear an individual voice. It's just more like this, oh, you know, sound. I wouldn't care if I died right now. That was my, okay, I've made it feeling. If you make one on the break, you don't make it after the break. You can still do that. You make one. Jebby's never been anything different than just who he is. 
And I think you can tell that in his music. You can tell it in what he writes and what he sings and how he sings. He writes from the heart and he writes from real life. I sing something that'll make you cry. I sing about God. I will sing about drinking. I will sing about drugs. When I listen to Jacob's music, it's life stories that we've been through together. It's, it's like some of the songs was wrote for me. JB is just JB. I'm Jacob Bryant. Me and the good Lord got it worked out, and I can go to sleep at night. That's what sets me apart. <laughs> I see him going just as far as he wants to go. I see Jacob headed to the top. I think he's already there, just don't, everybody don't know it yet. The next year for Jacob Bryan, I feel like it's gonna be scary, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be a lot of, a lot of different things for us. We have a lot of things in the works that I, that I necessarily can't say. We do have a 12 song record coming out. The lead single's called Bring You Back. It's a little more delicate side of me. I mean, we've shot more than one year and pour whiskey on my grave and all these things that are a little bit more on my darker, harder side. And a lot of people haven't seen the side of me that's, you know, heartfelt, a little bit more trauma-based. And, and I feel like they should, so that's why we did this. <laughs>